Today on Larry King Now, Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg, the stars of Two Guns on Working Together for the First Time. Let's swing for the fences. Let's offer it to Denzel. And I thought this was the perfect opportunity with the perfect actor. Opening up about fame, family, and fortune. You were a garbage man. I was a garbage man. I worked at the back of the truck, 22 square blocks. That's hard. Nothing that we do in the movies that's what I was hard. Asking. And the Two Guns director dishes on making the film. Mark was very clever in the way he approached this. First of all, he was very humble towards Denzel. And then he started getting at him. It's all ahead on Larry King Now. I've said many things about this film, Two Guns, but I will say it again. This is one of the most fun times you will ever have in a movie theater. The movie is hysterically funny and action-packed, and its stars are Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg, and how did they get the two of you together? Sheer luck. I had been attached for a while, and I knew the movie really lived and died on the other guy and the chemistry between the two guys. So you were in? Yeah. And, you know, there was variations of the script and... And uh, we just said, you know, let's swing for the fences. Let's offer it to Denzel, see if, you know, Thank if you. a miracle happens. And we got him in the movie. He responded to the material. Oh, they had the, what, did you read the script? I read it, I laughed. Uh, I gave it to my barber, Jerry. <laughs> he was here. He laughed, and I was like, okay. You have a barber? Well, he, yeah, he, he you know, he cuts okay. my hair. I still call it a barber. All right. He's not my barber, but he worked, you know, we worked together over the years. But, uh, you know, I was coming off of, or I may have been shooting uh, Flight. Flight, like, great which was a, Yeah, thank you, which was obviously a heavier kind of thing, and I wanted to do something, well, I wanted to have some fun, you know, to do something different. And, uh, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity with the perfect actor to, 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 to take, that, uh, take that ride with. So it worked right away. Yeah, well, we've known, right we, we, yeah. we, we've known each other b before the, you know, shooting, obviously, and, and uh, you know, it was easy. It, it wasn't any... No, it's one of those things where it either works or it doesn't. I don't care if you've known each other for 30 years. It can right. still kind of come across awkward and weird on film. But, uh, you know, just complete professionals. You know, I've, I've been able to ask Denzel for a lot of advice, both per personally and professionally. He's got four kids and, you know, married church-going guy, and, you know, he's had a wonderful career that I've admired for a long time, and, and it just kind of clicked, you know? And once he realized, you know, that we were in good hands and we could try whatever we wanted and look, you know, risk looking ridiculous and mm -hmm. we'd still be safe, and uh, then he was just like, he just completely opened up to the idea. Of now, it. you'd worked with the director before. Yes. You had not? No. And I interviewed him, and he said he was a little intimidated at first. A really? little? By you. He would keep coming up to me, um, could you ask Denzel to do this? I'm like, you go ask him to do <laughs> hey, did he really? All the time, yeah. I said, dude, I'm not, I'm not your go-between. <laughs> he said he wasn't a little intimidated. Do you sense that, by the way, because you're so, you're, you're such a major movie star? That I, you... But I don't think that way. You know, I'm not going, walking around, I'm a major movie star. He's his regular guy. Nah, that, yeah. that's, but I the mean, director doesn't know that. Uh, well, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely didn't tell him because he likes to try, because we, we're very familiar with one another. We've worked together. So he tries to, like, give me crap all the time. So that's why I wouldn't tell him that he's a regular guy. Make him figure it out for himself. Oh. And he's walked on eggshells for a little while, but, you know, he's so easy. Even if it was something that he didn't think would work, He'd say, Denzel, do you mind trying this? He'd be like, ah, no, nah, I don't think that'll work. As soon as the camera rolls, he tries it. <laughs> he tries well, it. It's anyway. only film. Yeah. If it doesn't work, you know, cut it out. I think it's going to be a big hit. I, I, it really is. It's, I think it's tremendous. What worked for you? What about this movie? Uh, it's just, you know, I always go with my gut. I, I responded to the material. It reminded me of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It didn't much. matter what they were doing or what was happening around them. It was really about the two guys. You know, if you remember Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, sure. they were being chased by something that never really appeared, right? So Who are it was, those guys? Yeah. Who are those so guys? It was like, right. So it was up to us, you know, to earn one another's respect, and that was the, the, the relationship it was, it was, the, was the movie, you know, or, or whatever the backdrop was and the setting was. And it also happened to have a great story and some kind of really interesting plot points and twists that, uh, you know, made it a, a nice combination of drama, action, and comedy. How about the cast? 
That's a great catch. Edward James Man. almost. Yes. And, all, and Bill Pax and all those guys, Paul, Pat, and Fred Ward, they all came to the table because they all had great parts to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Almost this is a new career. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? He was sensational. I, you know, I, I, almost, I, I always think back to, you know, obviously the signature role in Miami Vice, but not that I was intimidated, but, you know, as you think of Edward James, you know, he's a serious guy and... So it was great to have fun and like snap a towel and hit him in the head and <laughs> watch him piss on his hands, you know. I was like, oh, okay, he's a good guy. You know, he, I think he had fun. Oh, oh he, he had a blast. Yeah, he, he had a good time. Great, great You guy. agreed to be hung upside down for two days, the director told us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that like? I've never been hung upside Not down. Not fun. And you know it was, the, here was, here's Eddie, because we, the first scene we did with Eddie, we had him tied up. Right. So we're giving him all kinds of crap. We're slapping him in the face, I'm throwing all these insults at him. And then, a month later, we're tied up, upside down, and he's getting to give it back to us. He thoroughly enjoyed it. It was only supposed to be one day, but he kept acting like he was forgetting his lines yeah. and dragging it out as long as possible. What is it like to hang upside down? It's good for the spine. Really? But, but the blood he, rushes to your head. The, the blood rushes to your head, and, and there's a huge bull. I think we knew it was going to be funny. It, was, it wasn't fun, but it was going to be funny. Was it a hard movie to make? Uh, there's so much action, so much movement. It, you know what? Physical. It was, it was difficult to time. I mean, you're in Louisiana in the middle of the summer, you know, in some kind of uncomfortable situations in New Mexico, but not that bad. I mean, the minute it's over, only thing I remembered was all the great times we had and that we had a, a real shot to do something interesting and entertaining. Uh, I, I'm making Transformers right now. That's a hard movie to make. That's harder because... That's a hard movie to make. Well, the schedule, the action, it, it, you know, being wearing a harness every day, being hung off the side of a building, <laughs> uh, and I turn around and... He's not there. <laughs> but, uh, You're doing a movie in Boston? In Boston. Town? What are you doing? When I was 20, I worked for the, uh, I grew up in Mount Vernon, New York. I worked for the sanitation department. I was a garbage man. You were a garbage man? I was a garbage man. I worked the back of the truck, 22 square blocks. That's hard. Doing <laughs> movies, there's, there's nothing that we do in the movies that's, that's what I was, hard. I used to deliver for United Postal Service yeah. on the truck. Right. That was hard. Yeah, yeah. This is a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. People pain. always say, why do you spend so much time preparing and everything? Because there's a bunch of other guys out there that would want my job, and I'm not going to do anything to mess it up. That's right. More with Denzel and Mark right after this. What are you doing in Boston? Uh, working with Antoine Fuqua again, who, who uh, uh, directed uh, Training Day. And uh, we're having a good time up there. And this you playing the bad guy again? Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well, nah, nah. Bad. This is a regular guy. Works at like Kmart or whatever you want to call it, Home Depot. And um, it's a takeoff of the old uh, TV series, The Equalizer. But it's really not like it, other than than in name. Selection of roles, which is interesting. How actors? Do you ever turn down anything you regretted? You know what? No, I don't have mm -hmm. the one role where, and, and uh, I don't really have the one role. I've actually, I have, I've dodged more bullets. I've passed on more really? things that were tempting, especially for the money, but uh, I've dodged more bullets than I have Even uh, things regrets. that didn't work out. Yes. You were glad you didn't take yes. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Michael Clayton, that, uh, who was it, George? Clinton? George Clinton. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't trust, I'll be honest with you, I didn't trust working with a director I hadn't directed before. I was wrong. <laughs> and Seven. The movie Seven, the part that Brad Pitt played, they, they asked me first, and I just thought, nah, this is so dark. And then I saw the movie and, and oh, tried. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it just said, God bless him. You know, it was good for him, and, and it was successful. And you did a movie for one of my friends that is to be a classic, Ted. Ted, yes. He just saw it. He said, I just saw it <laughs> the other night. I was watching it in the, in the bus. That fight scene was crazy. Ted was, oh, man. That was you, there was no, he wasn't there when you were fighting, no. right? You were fighting nothing. Yeah. And that was embarrassing. I mean, when we were doing that fight, he said, he said, man, he, he was talking about the fight scene. And for me, the fight scene I didn't want to shoot and the scenes where I'm singing, I didn't want to do. But you don't the fight sing scene, well. No. And I don't <laughs> like to sing. I'll sing in the shower. But, but, uh, the fight scene was one of those things where there's, you know, 50 people standing around the crew members, and I've got to, like, 
fake to get hit and smack myself with a guy standing there, pulling my pants down, smack him in the ass with an antenna. And I was like, there's no way this is going to be in the movie. We shot it for like two days, and it's one of the most talked about scenes. So I, I kind of questioned Did you memorize that. all those names? Yes. Oh, it's yeah. Crazy. You rattled off Because I was of watching names. real close. I said, is he reading that? Yeah. But it's his head was names. moving around. I said, I The know. names of the girls. How'd yeah. you do that? You know what? I, I usually start out by reading the script out loud twice a day for, say, like eight to ten weeks out from the start of production. But that was the hardest thing to ever memorize because there's no nothing to connect right. it to. Connect. I was thinking, do I take a picture and put it with each name and then I can visualize that? Or So it was just this thing where I just had to keep reading it and reading it and reading it. And it's actually kind of drilled in my head. I can't get all of it now, but Samantha, Ruby, Taylor, Tom, and Lorraine, Chantel, Courtney, <laughs> Misty, Trina, Reba, Cassell, Casey, Laundry. And it just had this rhythm about it. And it was, it was I don't remember what I did yesterday. Yeah. And the scene, but the scene wasn't set up that way. It was set up where it was like, I'd say one name, he'd shake his head. Then I'd say another. I said, this is going to be 10 minutes long, mm -hmm. and it's never going to work. So I suggested <laughs> to Seth, I said, why don't we just do it like we, we have this game that we play when we're sitting around smoking, mm -hmm. that I'll like do something, I'll rattle off as fast as I can, like a game show. And when I hit the name, you hit the buzzer. As I said, I think that's the only way it can work. So he said, sure, let's do it. And we did it, and we did a couple of takes. He's a genius, Seth MacFarlane. Great. I, I've never done a sequel, yeah. even though I'm doing the next Transformer movies. I wasn't in the, the ones before. But with him, he's coming make from... Ted too? Yeah, and he comes from episodic television. And the idea that he has for the second movie is fantastic. And I think the first one was his first feature. It was a real learning experience What's Ted going to do? Oh, we're going on a road. Yeah. Man, you know what made that picture work with all the cursing is that it was a bear. Yeah. A lot of women what about, little kids. What about the scene where he goes for the job? What do you see? I didn't see. I haven't seen the movie from oh. beginning to end. Oh, you got to see came, that. I, I came in twice. Now, oh. two nights in a row, I came uh, in on the uh, fight. You got to see Then when that. he lost a piece of the ear, he stapled <laughs> the ear back on. Yeah. No, you got to see the beginning when I make him go get a job. Oh. And he says this stuff to this guy oh. in the grocery store. <laughs> it is the sickest thing sickest, you've sickest. ever seen. And then he says the most horrible thing you could say to a person, and the guy gives him the job. He goes, nobody's ever talked to me like that. You're hired. <laughs> then he gets caught having sex with the girl and the fresh produce, and he gives him a promotion, makes him the manager. <laughs> I mean, insane. We'll be right back with Denzel and Mark right after this. All right, tell me about Flight. Was that hard to make? I was such a interesting, did you see Flight? Absolutely. No, we, it, you know, it, it was great. Bob Zemeckis and, and John uh, uh, Gatins and, and, and I, the writer, we, we sat down for weeks leading up to production and just worked on the material and, and uh, uh, just did a lot of research and, and uh, no, it wasn't hard to make. It was it was it was great material to begin with, and, and with obviously one of the great directors of, of, uh, of our time. Do you so, like the character? You have to like the character. You can't you can't you know you're taught. I was taught in, in theater school that you have to love who you who you're playing. You know you can't judge who you are. Now the person if you're playing a character that doesn't like himself, maybe that <laughs> that's one thing. But but no, you got to like the character. All right, this movie we got a few minutes left. This is good. It's gonna. It's got to do very well. I mean, when you do, you, do you guys bet good on your movies? Do you say I know this is gonna do well? I think you 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 feel good about something when you make it. It, 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 it takes a lot to make a good movie. A lot goes into it. You know, you got to have great material, great cast, great people both in front of and behind well, the camera. Well, you got to be happy. With and this. then everything else has to. You know, you have to get a little love from the movie gods as well. But I certainly think uh, we we made a great movie. People are responding to it in a way that. Uh, you know, you can tell the difference between people trying to be polite and people being genuinely, you know, enthusiastic about the movie. So we hope it does well. I'll do everything in my power to, to get it out there to people. And it makes it a lot easier for me because my job is to not only make the movie, but to promote the movie. Then when I feel good about it, then I feel, you know, it's a lot easier to do. How do you think so? Ditto. <laughs> Are you good at betting how movies I, No, I don't go there, man. You know, I've been, I've been around too long, you know, but... Uh, but now that you know, with the tracking and all that, you get a sense of, of, of where where you're going to be box office wise anyway. But what I haven't done, and 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 I remember when I was doing the the ADR, the looping work, you know, I had seen the movie five or six times, but I sat and watched it by myself. And they're like, oh no, you got to see it with an audience. So I still haven't seen it with an audience. You know, well, I've seen it with an audience, and they roar. And they, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. So that's what I got to do. Yeah. It is, when you build it as a comedy, the trailer doesn't tell you much. It's a comedy, right? It's a comedy action. Good. 
Tell them. <laughs> it is a comedy <laughs> action thriller, as good as they come. Good. Oh, wow. Thank hey, good luck to both. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Pleasure Mark. to you. Good to see you, Mike. Thank you, brother. Good seeing you again. Thank you, Larry. Great meeting you, finally. Yeah, I know. Finally hey, good hey. to see you in person. That's not Beverly Hills. Denzel, <laughs> walking the streets. Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. The film is Two Guns. If you don't like Two Guns, take your pulse. You passed away. Uh. <laughs> You're watching Larry King now, and our special guest is Baltazar Cormacord, the director of Two Guns. What led you to this film? Well, uh, when I was doing the, the post on Contraband, uh, Mark kind of said, you know, I want, to, want you to read the script, you know, and I want to do it. And uh, so I checked it out, and I kind of loved the tone of it. And I've always been a fan of movies like Buzz Cassidy and The Sundance Kid, and movies that don't take them too, uh, too, uh, self too seriously. And I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity to do something like that. And I show a little, <clears throat> you know, different range and different tone that I've been doing. Did you see it more comically? Well, I, I saw I saw the the, the 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 opportunity of playing comically with actors that not not necessarily are comics. So uh, after uh, reading it, I you know we started talking with Mark and the producers, saying you know let's try to get Denzel to do this with us because people haven't seen him being light in a movie that much. And oh, yeah. I, I love like I always remember in like uh, Midnight Run when De Niro did his first kind of. Comic thing, and I just I love it when I, when a serious actor shows a little. Some don't do it well. No, no, of course yeah, that, that's the tricky, that's the risky part. Yeah. You know, so I was I was excited to get you know not a straight up comedian but a serious uh, actor to do this and and find the lighter tone in it. And Wahlberg, of course, is adaptable to anything. Yeah, yeah, right? he's become you know known for his comic talent now. Did you think he would become this big? Well, I remember when I saw him first. Uh, I saw him in Boogie Nights, as I, and uh, I was kind of blown away by his performance. There was something very real about him, and and uh, I, I liked him since then. Of course, uh, you know, the, you know, saw the movies more, but I could see it then. But I, maybe as time went by, I didn't see it necessarily. And then working with him, I really understand it. He's a very street smart, street smart guy. You know? Now you you are <clears throat> is enormously famous in Iceland. You're called the Steven Spielberg of Iceland. You've won the awards that Iceland gives. What do they call their 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 the Edda, right? Edda, yeah. <laughs> the Edda Awards. Was Contraband your first American film? Yeah, it was the first <coughs> studio movie. I had done smaller uh, English language films, but outside the system, you know, very small films. And and but th this was my first. Uh, studio uh, financed film. At was, studio. was it different for you? Not really, no. Bigger budgets. Yeah, bigger budget, you know, bigger egos a little bit, but but <laughs> <laughs> but, but they, as I say, the head is the same size in the frame as an Icelandic actor. So it's pretty much uh, the same job, you know. It's a, it's a little bit more politics, but I have been very lucky with the, with the, with my experience over here. I haven't, you know, I, I don't really have anything to complain about regarding, you know, I get to do what I want to do. And the movies, you know, are not compromised. Did you have a lot to do with the full cast, casting of Paxton and Almost? And yeah, 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 yeah. The, I mean, that, that's something I really like. I, I like to go to those guys that I like from uh, films I've seen in the past and, and, and people that maybe have done indie films and not necessarily what well, would be the most obvious choice for a, a, a cameo in a studio film. And, and Paxton hadn't done anything like this. Nothing. I've never. <laughs> no. In fact, so, for the first ten minutes, you don't recognize him. No, it's it's fantastic. And, and I mean, he actually <clears throat> showed up when when we met in a costume. In that he really? came in I'm very close to what it ended up being. Actually, you know, he was so ready to do this, and and I was like, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm I'm ready to take the chance. We'll be right back. You were an actor, right? Yes. I am an actor. I mean, I still do sometimes, but I, uh, the director has kind of taken over. When you direct stars, and I don't imagine you direct bigger star than Denzel Washington. Not right? really, no. <laughs> I don't think there are ma you know, many of them. But the director's in charge. Yeah. The film is the director's media. Right. Is it hard <clears throat> to uh, boss around someone who's so internationally famous. It is, yes, of course. I, I mean, it's, it's uh, you, you're sitting there, you know, damn it, this is Denzel Washington, I'm gonna tell him that, you know, he sucks, or... <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 but I've given myself the, the promise that if I think something is not right or something I can do better, I will go up to the actor, even if it's uh, Denzel, I'll tell him, you know, you know, I think, you know, that you have a tick or, you know, there's something that I, you know, I don't understand. I will do that. It's not always easy. But, you know, most actors, 
you know, as it goes, go, the time goes by, they like it. You know, they respect it. You know, they, they feel that you're doing it because you, you are, you know, you're doing your job. And, and it might be a little difficult in the moment, but, you know, later on, you know, you get the respect. Uh, some other things. The, the, how did you direct the scene with the bulls? <laughs> well, the funny thing, that wasn't in, in, in the script. No? So, no, it wasn't in the script. So I came up with this idea, I think, I, because I, the bull in the beginning was in the script, but, the, but I said, we've got to use this bull again. So, so I came up with it, let's hang them up on their feet and release the bull instead of having a, <laughs> I think there was like supposed to waterboard them or something, you know, I just, we've seen that a thousand times in so many movies, so let's do something different. And the producer, Mark Platt, who's a great guy, and, and uh, you know, it's like, well, if, you, if you're going to ask Dan Settle to hang on his feet for two days, you can do it, but I won't do it, you know. I was like, I'm not... You yeah, hang him upside down. Uh, hang him yeah. upside down, yeah. When you and, see this, you'll understand. <laughs> yeah. It's a terrific film. Yeah, and, 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 and first of all, I went to Mark, because I know him, and he's like, all right, I'll do it, you know. <laughs> and, and then I went to Denzel, and, and that what was... What did he the, say? Well, he took it really well in the end, you know. He's like, he, was, he also tests you, you know. Why do you want to do this, you know? Uh, you know, and then you, you go through that process, and, the, and yeah, I'll do it, you know? <laughs> it's like, and they had to hang upside down oh, for... Oh, they had to hang upside down for two days, you know? And, and the great thing about that is that, of course, some of the bull, it has to be, you know, we can't, you can't release a bull on them, some of the stands in there, and, <laughs> and some of it... You're not going to kill them. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and you got to make them feel safe. But, but it, it creates also an atmosphere, you know? Having someone hanging upside down like that, you know, his acting, you know, is affected by that. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> What's the difference from a directing standpoint in making the big scene, the big action, the blow up of the bank, to intimate scenes? Well, I, I mean, I went into this. I started directing theater. I went into this to direct actors and, and create characters and, and scenes, uh, you know, situations. That's why I like the humor to come out of the situation, not just be, uh, you know, a, a funny stick or what, you know. So. I mean, but on the other hand, I, I enjoy doing a little bit of action, you know. I, I mean, I never got to do that in theater, so... But so. do things go wrong? I, <coughs> I burned down, a, you know, a, a freezing plant in Iceland. You know, <laughs> that was a little mistake, you know, we lost the fire into it, but it was a damned one anyway, so... Did they let you on that base? Yeah, they let me on that base. I was the, the New Orleans uh, Navy base. Yeah, well, the shocking thing is the Navy doesn't come out very well in this movie. No, I'm a, no, no, not really. I'd be surprised they gave approval. Yeah, it, it is, yeah. You know, when you, when you say it. I mean, I, I didn't really handle that part of it, but it is, it is. And we, I mean, it's, it's, there are lots of cases like this anyway, all over. I mean, I, I don't necessarily tend to, you know, diminish their work, but at the same time, you know, we know stories about things that have happened. Are you going to do more films in America? Absolutely, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm uh, now getting ready to shoot a film called Everest. For working title, which is about the '96 uh, uh, accident that happened on Everest, uh, so we get cast it already. Well, we are very close to it. Yeah, we are, <laughs> it's all already out. I've talks with Josh Brolin and and Jake Gyllenhaal and and uh, Jason Clark and John Hawks. They're going to shoot on Mount Everest. We're shooting there and uh, in the Italian Dolomites, which I came from yesterday. So we're scouting there. Boy, you have some life. Yeah, it's. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> terrific life. So as you see the. When you see the final thing of Two Guns, are you totally happy? Yeah, I am. I'm really happy because I, I you know, the, of course you work with the, the producer and, and, and the studio, but there were never any, 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 uh, they loved the movie from, uh, from the, so the first cut, basically. So it was actually me asking them to get a little more to change things. That wasn't them asking me to change things. Well, it's a per I, I will tell you, uh, I, I don't often like to see films before I interview, so I'm, I'm as curious as the audience. But I saw this, and it is a one. You ought to feel so proud of this because it's it combines both action and humor, and the play off each other. Did that chemistry work right away? It was. Yeah, I have to say, Mark was very clever in the way he approached this. First of all, he was very humble towards Denzel. You know, he gave him a little bit the status. You know, but and then he started getting at him. You know throwing things, because, they, because Mark is an incredible improviser, you know, he's very good at it, and a lot of, we improvise a lot. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I love doing that, and I also come <coughs> from a theater background, it's like, you know, I, first I, I, I make sure I have everything from the script, but then let's try something different. I learned it basically from Ingmar Bergman, he said, the more you prepare on, 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 before you go to set, the more freedom you will feel on the set. 
to do whatever you, comes to your mind. Because now you're not trying to just figure out how, how can I get through this day. It's more, I got I that cup. Right. So, so now we can play. And, and then dancers started, you know, coming back at him and it started getting really interesting. And they liked each other, you could see that. And that's partly also luck, you know. I can't take all credit for that, it's partly luck. You can have two guys who hate each other and you can't just, you can't do anything with it. But then it's all about, you know, finding the right tone, the balance, you know, of, of keeping it, you know, grounded but funny, you know. And they handle the weapons well. Oh yeah, yeah, they know that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do that in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure, Baldessar. My pleasure. Thanks to my guests, Balthazar Kormacher, and of course, Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. Go see Two Guns. It's out in theaters Friday, August 2nd. You will not be disappointed. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time. <laughs>